I remember when we'd found out that Whiteham had ash dieback and my first reaction was, my goodness, that's really bad. About 90% of all the ash trees will die. This has been a silent pandemic that is fundamentally shaping the nature in Western Europe. Ooh, um, the thing I really like about ash is how beautiful the tree is. And it's really sad to think that those trees will go. It's a beautiful tree, the ash tree. It has a lovely bark, lovely leaves. Because it has a semi-open canopy, it lets light through to the, to the forest floor. And just walking around a high abundance ash area is a joy. The simple loss of such a beautiful and iconic tree will be a psychological loss. Ash dieback is a fungal disease called Hymenoscyphus fraxineus. It's an alien species that came over from Asia, probably on the timber trade, um, first being detected in Poland in the early 1990s, and then it came to the UK in around 2012. But we didn't detect it in Whiteham until about 2017. Whiteham is a terrific place to study ash dieback, both in how it's affecting the ash trees and also how it's affecting the wider ecosystem. And that's because it has such a long history of studies of the mammals, the birds, the other trees, the soil. What we're doing over the next few years in Whiteham is trying to bring together all those range of studies to understand that when you take out the ash trees, how does that cascade through an entire ecosystem? The Ash Dieback project is a four-year project, which means that we have to do something to project into the future. For that, we have three different types of plots. So we have a control plot without any ash at all, projecting really far into the future, when all the ash trees have died and other tree species have recolonized that plot. We then have a plot with a lot of ash, um, and then a third plot, um, which is also very high in ash abundance, but we're going to kill all the ash trees. And that's projecting into the future, maybe 10 to 15 years. When you start opening up that canopy with lots of tree death, you're going to have areas of more light coming through. Then we might expect, for example, the bramble and the understory to get more dense because of that extra light. Ash is really important because it's got these very palatable leaves, really soft, incredibly yummy. And these leaves break down incredibly quickly in four to six months, which means that there's more nutrients in the soil for the trees to take up and grow. So if you remove the ash tree, you're basically slowing that system down. One of the fascinating things about a change in an ecosystem is that there are winners and losers, and there are also different processes determining what you win and lose. So if you take the mindset of, of a small mouse, what determines how successful that mouse is? On one level, it's determined by how much food there is. If ash disappears, the food supply might diminish over time. The other thing that threatens that little mouse is being eaten. So as the forest becomes more shrubby and more light comes through, that mouse may also be under less pressure from being eaten from above. Plant diseases, uh, in some ways, are natural, but the increasing frequency of diseases is one of the features of global change. And this is because increasing travel and trade and movement means that diseases spread more quickly. Trade has certainly played a role in moving ash dye back across Europe and into the UK. This is not the first time, and it's not the last time a mass mortality event like this will happen. With climate change, these things will probably become a little bit more frequent. So just working on a project where we can actually um, figure out what will happen um, so that you know in the future this can be of some use I think it's a, it's a nice feeling even though there is a lot of death. I love ash trees so I do feel wistful to, to know that how much the, this woodland is going to change. I won't be able to walk through groves of ash tree with light dappling through probably in five or ten years time. However I think my ecological hat tells me that change is always occurring in ecosystems in one way or another. The ecosystem of White and Woods and the richness of the ecology and the interactions will be here for decades to come.